Today, I'll be going over all of the new additions, changes, and fixes that came with the new Guts and Black Powder update, and it is a big ass list. So let's go ahead and get started. We got two new maps, one objective and one endless. The new objective map is called Kaw, a snowy village set in southwest Germany which is located on the right bank of the Rhine. Kaw is known for the castle Foz, where it served as a toll gate for merchandise on the Rhine. The cutscene that plays at the top of the castle includes Blücher, who crossed the Rhine with the Prussian and Russian armies on New Year's night in pursuit of the French. This was around 1813 to 1814. Your primary objective in this map is to collect supplies through the town and then survive a blitz of zombies at the endgame castle. I do have a video out already on this map if you'd like to see the full walkthrough. The new endless map is called La Sainte, a weld farmhouse compound in Belgium. This map played a crucial part in the Battle of Waterloo on June 18th of 1815, where it was defended by 400 King's German Legion troops. Overall, this map is not a big map, which is how every endless map is so far in Guts and Black Powder, but it is my favorite because it's pretty much an end of the line experience, being bombarded by zombies from every side while you survive in the middle. The first thing people decided to do on this map was to stand in the fire, which pretty much sums up the population that plays this game. Around the perimeter are a couple of barns and a house that you can enter, and the barn connecting to the house also provides a loft which makes it a great camping spot. I want to know, what would you guys rate this map? Moving on from maps, we do have one new weapon that has entered the game called the Pike. This is the first primary melee weapon that has been added to the game, and in a video I made before, this weapon had a stupidly fast swing rate, being faster than the Chaplain's Stake, which is the fastest swinging melee weapon in the game as of right now. However, it did get a massive nerf where it has a delay between swings, making it slower than most melee weapons now. It does have excellent range, doing 50 damage, which is the second highest damage dealing melee weapon, and it also keeps the the charge ability buff that the officer gives, but it does have a slow swing rate, a very small hitbox, which makes it difficult to hit zombies even with the charge, and you no longer have a firearm. I also have a video showcasing this weapon for those who want to dive deeper. This update brought a lot of changes in general which we will go over next, including new ways to work the classes, animations, mechanics, and the appearance of it all. The medic and chaplain got overhauled on the way they can support teammates now, making it easier to provide assistance and healing or blessings. Now, now, when a medic or chaplain wants to assist you, they will get highlighted and there will be a prompt that will say to take their healing or blessing. A chat bubble will also appear saying that they want to support you. This makes it easier to see who is trying to help you and you don't have to worry about unequipping anything like before. Speaking of classes, the sapper got a new shove ability and their buildings got some additions. While you hold your axe out, you can now choose whether or not to shove zombies. You can hold F to start bracing and then release to shove a zombie. The shove ability works on shamblers and runners, but it does not work on barrels and zappers. For the buildings, they now show visible damage. You no longer have to hover your mouse over structures to see their displayed health. They will now show visible damage depending on how many hits it took. And when you repair a damaged structure, it will also get repaired visibly. And the menu for building structures has also changed, showing custom icons for each structure, getting rid of that weird old Windows XP menu. The blunderbuss got a new model and a reload animation, and this slightly increases the reload speed. Along with the weapons, there is now recoil when you shoot them. Your camera will now jump vertically when firing a weapon, boosting the immersion of using said weapon. A lot of new customization has been added for the surgeon hats and priest outfits. And you guys know by now my way with flags. I am not finding these outfits. Fire is the new enemy in the game as you can now burn alive, which many of you seem to be enjoying. Standing in the fire for too long from either igniters or fire on the map will now set your character burning alive, and a custom animation is provided to show the torture that is being endured. The water bucket can be used to extinguish your teammates, and if you don't have a water bucket, then feel free to curb stop them. To stop out the fire, there will be a red square displayed on the victim, and pressing E on this red square will activate the procedure. Fire also just has a whole new mechanic, where if you step into the fire, 
your character will start to pat themselves out. This makes it so you can't use any of your weapons or utilities during this period of stop, drop, and roll. The end message? Stay clear from fire. One of the coolest additions in this update is visualizing low health. If you get hit by a zapper, survive an explosion from a barrel, or survive an explosion from your own grenade, your hearing will get distorted and muffled like you have tinnitus, which is a hearing dysfunction like hearing loss commonly gained after a blast exposure. The new Game Pass also gives you the Lancer subclass that was talked about in the patch notes. The Game Pass is called Regiment Pack 4, and this does unlock three exclusive regiments. But the main thing that it unlocks is the Cavalry section. This is where we can find the first set example of the Lancer subclass. The whole purpose of this character selection right here is just to have the Lancer equipped. And you can see the flag being displayed on the Lance or Pike as well with this regiment. There are new walking and injured animations. This was the first thing I noticed in this update, where you can now walk like a Jojo Bazaar character, and your character will also show an injured animation whenever they take damage, grabbing at their chest and slightly bending over a little. Just like the infection skin color change, this will also help make players more visible to those who can provide healing. The server browser also has some changes, and honestly, this is one of my favorites. This looks super refreshing, and the one major change is the picture that's displayed in the background for the current server's map. They also have their own green keys, which you can use to specifically search a server, making it easier to join a friend or a group of people. And then some other notable changes and fixes are mobile spectating, they removed bugle spamming, reworked grenade animations and the throw arc, reworked the nation regiment class menu, added a metronome mechanic to the fife, visible breath on cold maps like Vard and Cobb, more blemish packs, invert horizontal melee direction setting, and a lot of other dynamic fixes. Overall, this is my most favorite update by far, with everything that it brought. It was like an early Christmas present. What is your guys' favorite part of this update? Let me know down below or perish. You decide. But anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for me. My name is JMT, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.